Time for our weekly League of Ireland Premier Division uh, discussion. And joining us this week is a man, of course, who features quite regular on the programme and indeed uh, Harps commentaries as well, Mr Declan Boyle, former Fun Harps uh, player, former Sligo Rovers player. Declan, you're welcome again. Thank you very much, Austin. Good to be back. Yeah, Declan, Sligo Rovers, we'll start with them, top of the table. They are, of course, coming to Finn Park on, on, on Friday night. Uh, you're the Sligo under-19 manager. Uh, I'm sure you've had training between uh, Monday and, and when we're talking now. I would say there's a there's a great atmosphere and feeling around the club with, with the sides leading the way now in the Premier Division. Yeah, absolutely. Um, big result for them beating Shamrock Rovers over there. And it was funny, the Shamrock Rovers went 33 games unbeaten and then lost two within a very short space of time. So big result, obviously 1-0 up in Tala for Sligo. And that keeps them a point above Shamrock Rovers and it keeps it very exciting. But it's, yeah, it's good to be probably involved with Sligo Rovers the minute they're, they're going very well. They've only one loss um, for the whole season. So their form's been good. They're coming to Finn Park, obviously full of confidence. But um, Finn Harps is a difficult place to come, as we all know. And, and Finn Harps will, will be willing and ready to take three points off them if, if the performance is, isn't good enough. Yeah, and I suppose from a, a Sligo point of view, uh, it's it's evident how much they've come since the break for COVID last year where they were lingering in the bottom of, of, of the table. And now they find themselves sitting at the other end, leading the pack. And you have to give Liam Buckley and, and those involved there um, a lot of credit because it's been a fantastic transformation, so it has. Nah, it's some turnaround, hasn't it been? Like you, You're right, I mean, before COVID there, they were sitting bottom and then they came back from COVID and went on a run of games and ended up getting into Europe and probably they probably uh, got in more players and better quality players than Buckley did uh, in the off-season because of the fact that they got into Europe and they know there's probably uh, funding coming their way from the European adventure. So, yeah, listen, and that's added. And obviously, they've, they've added in the quality and they've, they've gelled together very well. And as I said earlier, only lost one game so far and get five draws and the rest are all wins. So, the performances have been very good. The good quality in the top end of the pitch and they can cause you problems. Um, and, and that's where they've kind of let out with. And, and they've started off very well, very consistent, not conceding too many goals. Um, and I suppose the key is that no injuries as such. And Liam Buckley chatted about it afterwards in the match in Chandler Rovers. If he can keep his team together, um, the squad wouldn't be the biggest, probably not the strongest in the league compared to Dundalk and Chandler Rovers. But if he can go through a season where he's very little injuries, um, he, he'll be up um, around the top three or, or two or even one if he, if he gets the luck he needs. Yeah, obviously he's going to keep them grounded. They're not going to get too carried away with this. And, and they'll know what the next challenge is, is, is going to be like because Fun Park, is, as you said earlier, it's a difficult place to come and Harps will be looking to put it up to them. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I mean, Harps have overturned them on many occasions in Fun Park and uh, I'm expecting a big performance from Fun Harps uh, on, on Friday night. Disappointingly, draw to score last minute one or um, Last week, and then obviously they bounced back for a terrific performance and an excellent result down in Waterford, one and two one after conceding as well. And that's a big thing coming from behind, one nil away from home, and, and digging out a really big performance. And probably should have won it more comfortably on, on the night. Um, the performance was excellent. Their home performance has been very good as well. Oshin and I'm expecting the same sort of performance. So, um, you know, we know what we're going to get from from, from, from Harps and. Um, you know they're very dogged, defensively very good. Don't give much away, and and um, it's going to be a difficult place for them to come and get three points. Yeah, but you're not want to go one nil down against the league leaders, will you, Declan, on Friday night? No, listen, there's no doubt about it. Like uh, you're right, um, there's not too many games where you go one down in the Premier League so far this season where teams have turned it around. Um, obviously last week uh, down in Waterford was an exception to that one, but majority of times when you concede first, it puts you under a wee bit of pressure. It also what it means as well that Ollie has to change the strategy a wee bit in regards to he likes to, to play a wee bit more defensive. Um, and if they can go goal hop, they can dig in a wee bit deeper and then hit teams in the counter attack. But when you have to start chasing games and you're pushing men uh, forward to create opportunities, that obviously leaves uh, spaces. And Sligo Rovers will exploit those spaces because our top three are very, uh, uh, very dynamic, really, really quick, and, and like to get in behind teams and, and can cause your problems uh, when they're left one v ones. If Harps are going to sort of trouble them, if Harps are going to come with a breakthrough here and, and if they are going to do damage to Sligo and Freddie, where do you think it's going to come from, Declan? Yeah, listen, I mean, Tundi Olabi has come on and done an excellent performance there down in Waterford and created them problems. Obviously got a penalty in the second half. Barry McNamee has been to the fore of everything that's 
been very positive um providing he can play higher up the pitch and, and, and stay close to uh adam um, foley who's obviously in six goals uh, joint top scorer with georgie kelly um so far so you know that's that's what you're looking at carlos Sullivan's very industrial down the right hand side um a lot you know with quality of ball needs to be a bit better at times but he does cause problems in the counter attack and he's got that pace as well so you're looking at the mixture of them it'll be interesting to see what the starting lineup will be will, will tony make starting 11 he's been coming on um in substitution roles started obviously down in waterford and, and made an impact and, and was heavily involved for a lot of the key moments of, of uh, harps attacks and obviously got a penalty as hit earlier and then brian mcnamee stopped that away and adam foley then scored an excellent goal down the right hand side just a minute later and a great funny so you know you're looking at those probably key players um defensively we're going to have to be very good against Lager rovers um we, we've done live commentary as you know up in the showgrounds and there's very little between both teams um just a disappointing mistake that on the night by mark mcginley cost us three points i would think you know so that's that's probably a key one um for you know so it's important we probably keep a clean sheet and we keep a clean sheet we've got opportunity of getting something out of the game yeah just moving on from from the last time time they met are, are sligo a better team than, than what they were that night now um yeah no, I don't mean it, that performance wasn't bad. It's like on the night, you know, when, when they want to go up and we had to go after the game, then they exploited the spaces they're left behind. They do have really good players in the top end of the pitch, as you already mentioned, and they will cause you problems. And Romeo Parks up there, obviously. Jordan Gibson has probably been up there with Player of the Year so far, scored a lot of key goals and uh, for them as a real threat on, on the right-hand side. So they have players that can hurt you. Like, um, they've been very consistent, as I said, um but no i don't see they haven't improved you know i don't say they've improved a lot since the last time i think they've just been very consistent you get an eight out of ten of them every single week to go out in the pitch it's very uh, uh unlikely you'll get it in below that sort of performance so they've been very good and say they've no injuries as well and, and not and any suspensions as such so they've been lucky in that side but listen lane buckley and uh, knows this is a difficult match this is not easy coming to fun park there's no easy games in the premier league and especially going to fun park it's not easy and uh, harps are in excellent form as well so it's it's going to be an exciting one it's just such a pity uh ocean that the fans can't be there because with um slag rovers all the top of the table and harps going really well there'd be a massive crowd and that's a disappointing aspect for, for me that fans can't go out both sligo and fun harps can't fans can't come out and watch the game what would be deemed a good result in your mind for harps on friday i think it's important that they keep keep putting points on the board oh she that's the key for me um so if that's a point or a three you know depending on performance you, you know some days you can say that's a draw would be a good result now obviously and you're talking slag rovers and how well they're going but on the night you could put on a really good performance you could create chances chances and you could miss those chances so afterwards you're thinking geez we let three go there so yeah that's an interesting one i don't know it's going to be a difficult game to count you know to find out what way it's going to go i think it'll be tight it'll be cagey Will there be a lot of goals? I don't think there will be unless unless Lego Rovers can score early or something like that. And then Harts will have to come out and, and try to get something out of the game. But yeah, um, I, I think a draw would be a big result um, for, for Van Harps. Um, Slag will probably come along to three points because they're going to be under pressure from Shamrock Rovers who have longford um, at the weekend and they'll have to obviously get three points there. Yeah. Uh, do you still do you still see Shamrock Rovers as as the title winners come the end of the season, Declan? I know they've yeah. sort of had a blip, so they have, but you can't take away the quality that they have either. Like, and they're, they're still favourites for it. Yeah, they're favourites for me. Um, at the start of the season, we were very unsure what what was going to happen between Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers. Who's going to win it? But I mean, Dundalk have just. Um, for one reason or another, just haven't performed to the level and to the quality that they have at their disposal. I mean, the 29 senior players at the squad, and they've definitely overs, as I said earlier, 33 unbeaten, and then they go um, two defeats on the bounce within three or four days, which is incredible. Um, but yeah, and as for me, Shamrock Overs are the best team in the league. Um, I don't think there's as potent and they don't have as much penetration as they had last year, not scoring as many goals, scoring a lot of late goals. The performances have been good. They're defensively a lot better. Sean Horst come in there and Brian Gannon's come in as well um, um, from um, from Dundalk. And they've, they've all tightened them up. We've not conceded too many goals, um, but they're not scoring as freely as they were. Um, Jack Bourne was there last year and was involved in 41% of all goals scored. And you did that out of your team. It's very difficult to replace that. Chris uh, um, can come in, but hasn't hasn't had that same impact that Jack Byrne would have. But yeah, listen, uh, still for me the best team in the league. 
best squad of players, um, Alem Dundalk, but they're playing they're playing well uh, at spells without scoring a lot of goals, but they're getting over the line. Pats, of course, are looking to challenge as well. They played Dundalk on Friday night, and given current form, you would nearly think uh, Pats should be walking out the door with the full three points against Dundalk in this game. But the uh, the, the Richmond Parkside, the Encho Core Club, have had blips along the way in recent weeks too, so they have Declan. Yeah, they have, and that's, you just don't know what's going to happen that game, do you? Should, because both teams, you just, you know, um, Dundalk, we just don't know what's going to happen. They turned over, obviously, Shamrock Rovers and, and Oriel um, last weekend, and then obviously they went up and they lost, they lost the next game then to Bowes, 5 1 comfortably uh, beaten by Bowes, and George e. Kelly scoring a hat trick on the night for him. But yeah, so you don't know what you're going to get from Dundalk. They have the players. When they hit form, they're really good. Um, St. Pat's have been far more consistent. I haven't conceded too many goals. Got, I've got a few lit goals as well and got over the line a few of those ones. But Stephen O'Donnell's come in and done an excellent job in there. They've been consistent. They've obviously added players um, that have helped them. Um, Robbie Benson came in and scored a penalty, obviously, last week as well to won the game and, and 2-1. So um, hard to know. I would see potentially a draw there um, on, that, on that one. Um, conduct. Can the doctor and beat them? They can. They seem to play better against the bigger teams, so that could be performance um, with a lot of other ex players, obviously playing for St. Pat's as well. So that'll be an interesting one. Um, but St. Pat's have been very consistent. They're up there, obviously, but just don't know how that game's going to go. Yeah, the other game on Friday night, Derry City are on the road against Drogheda United. Drogheda sitting above Harps, four ahead of the of the Balbo face eh? and Drogheda have been like Harps, one of the surprise packages. It's fair to say, Deck in the Premier Division. But from a Derry City point of view. Since Rory Higgins took charge, they haven't had a one under him at the Brandywell. But that's been flipped on its head with the waveforms. Yeah. Don't be surprised if Derry City can take a, a positive result and, and the pole points against Drogheda on, on, on Friday night. It wouldn't shock you, would it? No, that absolutely wouldn't. Isn't it funny? I, it's not, I don't know how that is. Like, uh, why that the performances have been so good away from home? Um, uh, and then at home, probably there's more pressure for them to take control of the game and drive forward and, and try to create their opportunities where potentially I would say that when they're at uh, away from home, they sit in a wee bit deeper and they're harder to break down and also very good in the counter-attack. Uh, Derry rely heavily on set plays. Uh, even the two goals the last day was, um, was the first one was obviously a set play and Ronan Boy scored from a scrappy goal in the back post. And uh, on top of that as well, this, uh, Joe Thompson scored from a strike from a free kick that was in the second phase and he uh, got a good strike into the net. So they rely heavily, they haven't scored too many goals from open play, so they rely heavily in set plays. Um, yeah, so that interesting, Drona in really good form. Obviously, we you know we, we lost them last weekend with a last minute um, free kick wonder goal by by Massey. But I mean, it's, it's one of those ones where, and then obviously they went and, and comfortably beat Longford. Um, up in Drogheda. So, I mean, Drogheda's form is very good. They're playing very well, very free. Um, they score a lot of goals um, and they have they have scored so many goals this season and, and they're very um, open. They like to play attacking football. And so it'd be interesting to see, but I, you're absolutely right. I, I expect that to be a very tight affair. I, I think Derry could get out of, that, out of, uh, in, out of Drogheda with a 1-0 victory. Yeah, which would be a huge uh, result for them. And if Dundalk were were to slip up, and even if Bows were to slip up, uh, they could, of course, be moving a couple of places up the table. We've already mentioned Shamrock Rovers. They're at Longford Town. You expect Rovers to bounce back after their uh, their, their two back-to-back -back defeats. And then we've got Bohemians against Waterford also on Saturday as well. Be interesting to see what Georgie Kelly is going to step up with at the weekend. Uh, very capable of grabbing another couple of goals, particularly in a match against a, a struggling Waterford side. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's a, I mean, so I don't know if you've seen the hat trick. It was a wonderful hat trick. It had everything on it. Um, both scored some excellent goals against Dundalk and Georgie got a, a, a wonderful, wonderful hat trick um, and a header included in that as well. So he, he's obviously been a major, major spine um, in Dundalk's defence, uh, scoring a big hat trick. Yeah, started off probably reasonably slow, um, but it's nice starting to come. As I said earlier, he's in six goals this season, so you expect him to to add to that tally. Um, he brings players into the game. We know he, he's a big, strong lad, but he's also quick as well. And, he, and when he gets the opportunities in front of goal, he, he normally works the keeper, he gets it entirely, or he scores a goal. So yeah, listen, he's a wee bit of confidence. Um, Waterford obviously aren't going so well, new manager involved, um, and you know they're conceding a lot of goals as well. So you expect both to, what the quality they have in the top end of the pitch to, to cause problems, and Georgia Kelly to definitely add one or two to his six already for the season. Yeah, just finally then back to the Harps-Stiger uh, Rovers game. What are you predicting on Friday in that one in Balbuffet, Declan? 
I think that could be a one-one draw. That's what I'm thinking. I think it'll be tight and cagey. Um, if if Harps can score first, I think they'll, they'll either get a point or three points out of it. So yeah, um, if Sligo go on to score first, it, 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 uh, I would, I'll be pushing towards Sligo getting three points. Okay, Declan, as always, thanks for joining us. Talk to you soon. Thank you.